Hi everyone, I'm Jack from Corker and today I'm going to be showing you how to lay turf. The tools you'll need for this will be a landscape rake, preferably plastic or aluminium, shovel or spade, a handsaw for cutting the turf, alternatively you can use a kitchen blade, tape measure for measuring out your areas, string line for a straight edge line or alternatively a board to give you that straight edge, wheelbarrow for any movement of soil and also then finally Corker's fine quality grass turf. Your first step is to measure out the area in which you wish to lay your turf. Ideally if your garden is a square rectangle size you just need to measure the length and width and that will give you your square meterage. So if you times the length by the width you'll get your total. As an example a 5x2 is going to give you 10 square metres in meaning you'd need 10 rolls of turf. If your garden is of an irregular shape or you have any obstructions in the way such as ponds or paving what you then need to do is divide it into smaller rectangles, add all of those measurements together to then give you your total square meterage. For topsoil, you'll need to multiply your length and width by the depth that you require. Now I would recommend a 50 mil depth or two inches. So that would be your length times your width times the depth to then give you your total amount of topsoil you'll need. Wastage is then something you want to factor in, which would be using a 5 to 10% ratio to add that to your additional square meterage. If you're struggling with any of this, please give Corkers a call and we'll be more than happy to assist you further. The first step is to prepare your ground. Now, if you have existing turf or lawn in your garden, what you want to do is remove all of that manually by using a shovel or spade. And then once you've done that, you'll then want to dig that to your depth, as mentioned earlier, at the two inch to allow you to put in new topsoil. Alternatively, you can use plant hire equipment such as a turf cutter and rotivator to prepare your lawned area. Once this is then done, you want to use Corker's top quality topsoil to bring yourself back up to that two inch depth. Once you've then put that new soil in, you just need to use your rake to move and spread the soil to give yourself a nice, even flat surface. If you don't have an existing straight edge line like this sleeper bed here, you can alternatively use a straight edge piece of timber or a string line to give you that straight edge effect. It's also handy to use the board to cross over your turf so not to put your feet on the newly laid lawn. What I've done is laid the turf in a staggered bond formation just like you would with brickwork. The reason for that is to prevent the joints from drying out easier and what I've also done is laid them in alternative positions to give a striped effect. Make sure that your turf is nice and tightly butted up together as best as possible. After doing so, you then want to knit together and push in the turf together to make a nice easy knit. If any joints do start to widen slightly, you can use the high quality topsoil from Corkers to fill in those gaps. Using your board, you then want to tamp your turf down to make a perfect connection to both the turf and the soil. For the purpose of this video, we've mocked up a crude curved edge that you might encounter in your garden. Now with your turf, when you get to those points, you want to fold over to that area and then using your saw, you want to then cut, folding back as you cut to expose the curves. This will then give you a nice tight cut to the curved area. Now, as we're filming here live at Corkers, you probably won't have a noisy forklift going past. Occasionally, you might encounter small gaps as you reach the end of your line. Now, normally you may wish to use off cuts, but what I'd much prefer you to do with my recommendation is to take a much further step back, recut a new line and put in a much more substantial piece of turf to minimise the joints and also give the turf a much better chance of health. Any exposed areas, you'll want to use Corker's high quality topsoil to just bank those in, just to prevent the turf from drying out. This can then be removed once the turf has then settled. Once you finish laying your turf, you then want to think about your aftercare. Now, you want to water your turf early morning or late evening, or both, depending on the time of year. Giving it as much water as possible will help with the knitting process of both the turf and soil. After two or three weeks, you then want to give your turf a knit test. Now, this is simply going out to your closest part of turf, giving it a lift. If it still lifts up, then you know the knitting process is still going ahead. 
which then I would recommend allowing another two weeks to then go and test again. If then by knitting is very tight, you'll know your turf is taken and I would then leave it for a further two weeks before giving it its first cut with your lawnmower set to its highest cut setting. Using Corker's high quality topsoil and high grade turf really speeds up the combination of your knitting process. If you do wish to find out about the materials and products used today, please visit our website at corker.co.uk where you can see all that information along with other tutorials.